Well, good afternoon. It's Hamlock Steve wishing you a very pleasant afternoon. And uh, I said that I was going to make a video about the solar array and the inverter system that we have on the property here. And uh, so I've done that, and this is just the intro. So, what's my impression of solar for after being here a month? Um, there's no doubt about it. It is a very secure system, a very secure feeling, knowing that you're off grid. Um, the systems work very well once they're up and running. Uh, there is a huge cost to installation, so you have to weigh that. There's no doubt about it, you have to weigh that. Um, as I said uh, in the video that uh, here, uh, you know, we'd be looking at about $350,000 to bring in regular hydro lines. And so, you know, spending $140,000, $150,000 on a solar array uh, really is small potatoes. Um, the other thing you have to do is research. A lot of these companies are still very new. Um, the inverters that we have are made by Xantrax and uh, they are still in business but they have been bought out by a larger company. And a friend of mine who has the Outback system, uh, they have also been uh, bought out by a larger company. After being off grid for 15 years, uh, he said that uh, what he'd noticed when they changed uh, when the company got bought out, uh, the customer service really fell off a cliff. It wasn't that great. And uh, I'm wondering if it's the same with the, the Xantrax system. So in many cases, you know, this is a fledgling type of technology, even though it's been around for quite a long time now. Uh, solar panels are getting more and more efficient. You know, the solar panels we have generate 200 watts per panel. Uh, I'm sure I haven't checked, but I'm sure that you can get more efficient panels than that, or they'll be just smaller. You'll be able to fit more into uh, the same area. And uh, so really, it, that's another thing is you, you really have to follow technology. You have to make sure that, um, you know, the changes that you are going to make are compatible. The lifespan of the system that you have, of course, is going to have an impact because, uh, you know, you want to pay back on this. You know, not only are you going to save yourself some money, but you actually want to pay the system off by generating your own hydro instead of having a bill coming through the door at the end of the month. Uh, so, the thing I took the time to do is talk to other people who have hydro or sort of off-grid systems already and just sort of get their personal opinion on how they felt about it after being several years off-grid. And of course there are some very good YouTube videos that you can watch of people who've got off-grid systems. But uh, yes, I can highly recommend it as a path to go. You will certainly feel better about yourself because you are living more environmentally, um, a cleaner kind of lifestyle. Um, it's a lot simpler. You are using harvesting the sun's energy, which is really free. Uh, I, I think that's a really, yeah, I think that's a good way to do things. Um, you know, I don't really sort of fall for the CO, the whole CO2 thing, but the whole polluting, you know, pollution is our big issue on this planet. And uh, if this could contribute uh, to a little less pollution, um, I know that there's the manufacturing process of the solar panels and so on and so forth. Uh, so it's kind of hard to avoid a lot of that stuff. But um, I think you will find that you'll feel better about yourself. You'll feel that you are standing on your own two feet. Uh, there's a sense of independence that comes with having a off-grid system. And uh, of course you're learning to be self-reliant because all of these little issues that we had with the system uh, had to be taken care of by ourselves. We had to investigate. Uh, now we did call in a technician and there are a couple of good companies up here, thankfully, in the Halliburton area um, because you, you will need, you will need a technician that you can refer to and uh, you need to, even if you don't need them right now, uh, form a relationship. But uh, ask, again, ask around. Facebook is absolutely, you know, incredible. The area that you're moving into, uh, just say that you're going to put in solar. Any recommendations? And you'll find no end of people will give you some ideas, uh, different people, different businesses, so on and so forth, that you can contact. And uh, so try and do all of this research before you install, because it could be a costly mistake. Okay, if you buy the wrong equipment or uh, you don't research the company that's manufacturing, you know, maybe it's got poor management. Maybe it's on its last legs. 
But uh, I think that this is going to be the way to go. I think this is where we are going to become more independent. We're going to be growing a lot more of our own food, producing our own power, and calling on the government an awful lot less for assistance. And I think we're going to do that because the government, whatever it touches, it just suffocates. It suffocates. You You know, you, you, you actually almost pay them to leave you alone. Uh, it is such a horror show every time you come in contact with some kind of government bureaucracy of one kind or another. So anyway, uh, I'll turn you over to the video now, I'll just sort of run through uh, some of the equipment that we have and um, uh, have a look after it. Okie dokie, here we go. Okay, so this is the outdoor section of the solar array. This is the video that I've been promising for a little while. Uh, there are 20 panels here, each creating 200 watts. And on this side we have uh, 16 more panels creating 3200 watts. So for a total of 7200 watts. And that translates, as uh, we will see when we go into the charging room, the battery room, into... I, I seen it as high as 106 volts going into the regulator, um, but at night, I mean even at night time, that's the amazing thing about these panels. Um, when you go down there at night time and check that charging regulator, uh, we're, you're still taking in about 25 volts. Um, it must be picking up some kind of ambient solar discharge, you know, from the from the universe. But anyway, it's picking up something. Whether it's reflected light, I, I've got no idea. So anyways, you've got 7200 watts going in, translating into give or take uh, a few volts, 100 volts either side for charging the battery. So I'm pretty pleased with the setup. Uh, it works. Let's say as we've got the uh, few niggling problems worked out. This is the main switch. You can isolate the array uh, just by turning that off. And that's what we were doing actually um, originally t when it was cutting out because it was overcharging, uh, we would just shut down the array because when it's full sun, uh, you can imagine, this thing is just charging like crazy. Uh, as you can see, these ones uh, can be tilted in or laid flat to the wall. Uh, this is a summertime position and uh, this one when it's pulled out uh, is a wintertime position uh, which just catches a little bit get a bit better angle catches a little bit more sunlight and um, so I can I recommend going off grid yeah I think it's it's it's, it's okay it's nice to be independent from the ravenous jaws of Hydro One um, wow I mean, they really do have you at your mercy because we're dependent on hydro. So one way or another, um, th th this was a great experiment here because as you can see, you know, we're about, well, actually you can't see because the trees are all leafed out, but we are about, um, you know, maybe 100 yards back from the road. The cost to bring hydro in here, you'd be looking at $300,000, if not more. So uh, that was an incentive to spend the kind of money because this setup uh, I would imagine you'll be looking at around about a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand all said and done by the time you get all the wiring in and uh, the expertise to do that wiring um, the inverters well like I say you know Tesla battery packs there's 15 grand just for the batteries just for the batteries so it's not cheap but when you have like I say uh, the alternative is uh, putting two poles in here from the road to string a, a hydro line which can go down I mean it's just as vulnerable as I would imagine this is this is less vulnerable I mean you'd have to have uh, you know hailstones the size of basketballs cancel 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 don't think those thoughts but uh, you know to, to take me out and even then I've got a generator so uh, we're good to go we're pretty secure here okay so here we are this is the master control room this is where the inverters are Okay, so basically what's going on here is the uh, the raw hydro from the panels comes in here. It goes into this controller, uh, which basically uh, regulates the amount of hydro going in to the inverter. Uh, that then charges the battery. There's a charge end to that inverter that charges the batteries up. It then goes back into the inverter but 
it is still connected to this controller because uh, once the batteries are fully charged uh, then it goes on to a phase called absorb and what that does is it basically overcharges the batteries just a little bit uh, to make sure that all of the batteries are fully topped up and then it goes into float and uh, or resting at night time and that's basically just um, sending away that charge to earth so that um, you know you don't overcharge the batteries and create all kinds of problems so the main thing other than charging that the inverters do is they convert the hydro cone back out of the battery uh, into AC 60 cycles and boost it up to 115 this is 24 batteries all 2 volts each uh, they're lead acid. Now, uh, the kind of um, equipment that we have today is solid state and uh, Tesla batteries, that kind of stuff. Now, there are pros and cons to both. This system, these battery packs are heavy, uh, they're dirty, they're dangerous. Uh, the fumes coming off these uh, batteries are highly explosive and uh, so the room has to be vented. And uh, of course, this is not solid state. These are early models, these are about 10 years old. They say things have changed very, very much in the solar world. Um, are they more efficient? They're probably a little bit more efficient than these ones, but the upside to all of this is uh, these have replaceable components. Uh, it's not going to be as difficult to repair these inverters as it would be some of the newer when they, when they go, they just go and that's it. There's, there's, there's no fixing them, there's no adjustments, there's no nothing. And the same with the batteries. Uh, you know, this battery uh, here, um, when it starts to die, when it comes to the end of its life, I mean, uh, you know, it will go down to, you know, 75%, 60%, 50%, 45%. And, and so it goes down in stages. So you will at least have some kind of a buffering effect. Um, so it gives you a bit of a, a, a bit of that's yeah, some time to get the money together to buy these new batteries because the Tesla batteries are not cheap either. You know, you probably to have a, a bank of batteries like this in a Tesla, you're probably looking at fourteen thousand dollars. So that ain't cheap, buddy. The, this battery pack here is around about six and a half thousand dollars. Now these batteries do have to be checked all the time, um, once a month, and you'll see there is a flap right here now you flip that open and uh, that will expose the fluid inside the battery acid okay now you can see in there uh, there is some uh, plate you can see the plastic filter some black and sort of lighter dark black and um, and the fluid in the bottom that's battery acid and i need to top that up with distilled water because it is down just a little bit that has to be maintained, topped up. You cannot overfill uh, because, like I say, if it spills on the top, um, yeah. So this is a big part of looking after a solar array. array. It, it's not so easy to disappear. I say it does have to be maintained, and you have to refill with distilled water. And uh, the reason we have two. Uh, inverters is because the pump the well cable is a 220 or 240 volt and so there's your breakers that goes straight to your well pump so this second one is really a kind of slave uh, inverter and I'm wondering you know if we could uh, if one of them went down we could just switch over to the other one you'd, lo you'd lose your 240 there's no doubt about that but um, yeah Anyway, on the top here, of course, uh, these switches here, uh, you can turn these uh, switches, and that's your inverter bypass, and I can run the whole system directly off generator power. And so, if this does go down, if the whole system tanks and I'm in real trouble, uh, yes, I can just turn over to a generator, 
be a pain in the rear end and maybe a little bit noisy but uh, if that were the case you know I would end up buying a, uh, a diesel generator you know uh, something like a whisper quiet uh, that they have on the building sites these days you don't need a full size one but certainly a mid sized one would work perfectly so there is the solar array the solar setup uh, once we got these inverters balanced the, the problem that we had I don't know if you can see here, let me see, uh, that will focus in, that is the battery actual volts DC 48.6 and this one down here, uh, battery actual vo voltage DC 48.6 and these two were not in sync. Uh, this one, the slower one, the slave one, was reading 70 volts DC whilst this one was reading 48, 49 volts DC and uh, the fact that they were out of sync uh, meant that the system kept tripping out because it thought it was going into overload uh, now that that has been synced up no problems whatsoever so if you're thinking of solar um, yes, do, do your research do your research uh, these I would be asking how long these things are going to be manufactured. That would be my key question. And of course, uh, what, what are critical components for these uh, inverters? And I would have a couple of spares on hand just in case they stop making them. That's another issue we live in uh, our world today. It moves so fast, things disappear off the market. And, uh, you know, once you can't get parts, uh, basically, you know, it's worthless. It's just a pile of junk. And of course the other thing you have to do with the batteries is test for the specific gravity of the battery acid to tell you what kind of condition uh, the battery is in. And you see there's uh, the red, the green and the, uh, the white there. And it says um, recharge, fair and good. So if I just drop that in there. And you can see that the it's floating in the white at the end of the green, so it tells me that that is charged up. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, this is what off grid looks like, and uh, really, you know, actually, like once we had all, all the problems resolved, um, electrically speaking, my life has not changed, and this system. Uh, 7,200 watts going in, a 50 volt battery uh, set. You can run this entire estate, the big house, this apartment and everything else. Uh, the biggest issues seem to be in winter time and of course when we have low light. Anyway, uh, in the meantime this is Handbook Steve signing off, wishing you a very pleasant afternoon and we'll talk very very shortly. You take care now. Bye.